Hello and welcome. I am Twisted Logic, and this is part three of a kind of a tutorial on setting up a fortress in Dwarf Fortress. If you enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments, and subscribe for more videos. In the last episode, I believe that uh, we got a migrant wave, and I took a break from playing for a day or two. All last week, I just made videos and uh, uploaded them. And yesterday, I kind of needed to uh, just chill out and watch some stuff. So, let's see where we're at. We got the bridge closed right now, and we got one guy outside. So the first thing we're going to do is open this up. So, pull the lever now. Um, we got our trade depot set up and a stockpile here. We're digging out some rooms here. And we're creating a farm. So in this video, I want to create the farms and get alcohol started. Over here, I'm going to just um, X this part out here. I don't think we need that. This is going to be the butcher and tanning area with a new animal area here. So I had a cool idea after um, I watched some historical documentaries. And I think what I'm going to do is build an above ground fortress somewhere in this area. Maybe right over top of this stream. Um, so we're going to need some blocks. We're going to need a lot of blocks. So I'm going to add E for blocks, repeat, Alt W. Add a limit. Uh, blocks of any rock is fine. And then the range. Make it 250 to 500. We got all these migrants. I set them up in um, Dwarf Therapist here to just be hauling until we get some things sorted. We got a nice leather worker and I got to start making some clothes. And what is he? Wood cutting. So he's going to, I'm going to put him, I'll mirror this kib here. I'll mirror him with these four right now. mechanics and architecture as well. Now what's missing? Oh, here we go, masonry. How I do Dwarf Therapist here. I'm going to right click on this guy. Customization. New custom profession from this unit. And I'm going to name this um, Builder. Change the icon. Something. The icon doesn't really make a difference, so I'm just going to they're kind of small on my screen too because um, my computer outputs uh, 4K. Um, so these icons are really tiny, I can barely see them. If you could see them a little bit better than me, you'll notice that it's kind of like some of them have like a sword or a hammer inside of them. That's fine, just like this. And then I could write maybe a B there and then change the color to blue. And now this is what the icon looks like, and hit OK. And now if I wanted to add um, Olin here as a builder, just right click, customization, builder. And then it sets those professions, and then I write. Now, but I don't want the builders here to be doing farming. So Dayton here is a farmer. I'm going to take off uh, masonry wood cutting and carpentry from, from Dayton here, and I'm also going to take off, uh, so we'll sort that. So it's sort by assigned labors here, so we got 42 assigned labors on Dayton, 45 on the builders. On the builders I'm going to take off the farming duties here. Just like that. And on Dayton, he's not going to construct or deconstruct. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So I have to set. I have to write. I have to click on all four of them, and then set them as builders, and then modify it. And now right click on them, customization, update custom profession builder from this unit. Okay. And now if I wanted to um, 
some of these names, it's like, okay. Ingish, Ingish here. I'm gonna customize builder and click on it. So it looks like you got five builders. I'm gonna right click on him, customize, new custom profession from this unit. And he is going to be a steward. Okay. And then update custom profession. I don't have to do that because or I didn't have to update it because I just set it. We get some more stewards here, three more stewards. Customization, steward. I'm gonna set nickname on Dayton. First steward Dayton. Okay. Set nickname, it was a little too long. Just like that. Commit changes. So I got first steward Dayton. I'm gonna set Olin's nickname. First builder Olin. Done. Okay, so then we got three haulers, four miners, five builders, and four stewards. I think that's pretty good. The farmers here, I guess I can also have them fish cleaning. Okay, so I haven't unpaused it yet, but they're gonna throw the lever and that's gonna open up and then, what is this? Lungfish out here, okay. So build, shift D for a trade depot. Oh, it looks like I could build the trade depot right on top of the brook. That's interesting. I have the brook running through the fortress. So I want to test the cavern layer. So I'm gonna to go to designations and start off with a channel, maybe like here. And then I'll dig a stair. Um, and we'll just kind of go down until we hit the cavern layer. Well, let me unpause it. Okay, so the fortress is reopened. Lower here is felling some trees. So the A here is um, the active job, construct rock door. Nine idlers, why is that? Units. Okay, so there's not a lot of hauling. So I'm gonna go back to Dwarf Therapist. Yeah, water hauling. Just take him a minute. I have one bucket there. One, two, three, four, five buckets. Let me just take him a minute to get uh, sorted out and what they're doing. Take back to you. I'm press J for jobs. Okay, so construct building, unknown material table. Drink, eat, dig. Okay, so I need to create more work. So I'm gonna build U. Okay, build W, U for butcher shop. Is that right there? Another one next to it. Tanner. Another Tanner. This. These two rooms are gonna be a wood stockpile. And I'm 
I'm also gonna now they're putting the blocks in here, which isn't uh, isn't that great. So I'm gonna need to create a maybe a block stockpile here and in here. And change the priority. These ones right here. So they're gonna mine those and then get the priority. Okay, P, W for Woodstock Paul. There. There. Build workshop. W for farmer's workshop. Put that over here. Okay, now they now they um, now they're starting to collect the wood. It looks like. Some doors down here. I'm also going to have to think about the rooms for them. The rooms for all the dwarves. New zone here. Shift N. No, N, shift N. Okay, we got a baby alpaca too. Okay. B. Z for status, A for animals. Uh, it's somebody's pet, so I can't slaughter somebody's pet. I'm gonna press W on the dogs to make them more dogs. The trainer's going to be any. Whoever trains the war dogs, the, the, I'm also going to go to this zone here. Animal training, T. Whoever trains those war dogs, the war dogs are going to follow them around. So I usually do um, military dwarfs for that. Um, but we'd, we're not going to set up military in this fortress, maybe for a little bit. Okay, so dig J. There. And then dig I. Start it there, and we'll just go down maybe... 25 seems good. Oh, I didn't change my priority. So while that's going on, I'm going to um, just see if I can measure out what I want to do over here for the above ground fortress. Trade depot somewhere in the fortress. Just put one right here. And then suspend it. Build, construct, wall. Okay, that's five. One, two, three, four. So that's 26 high, I can make it.
I'm just gonna write that down 14 blocks away. Some rice plants, alfalfa, kumquat tree sapling. We got whip vines. I think that can be alcohol. We got spinach. Green wheat. So I'm gonna set up a zone here. I. I'm gonna make it as big as I can. I think it's 31 or 32. Yeah, 31 by 31 is the largest you can make it. Enter. And then G for gather, pick fruit, shift G. If I ignore fruit on trees, um, then they can just go out and pick all the um, berries, to tubers, and uh, fallen fruit. If I want to pick fruit from trees, I'm going to need a step ladder. I'll leave that on for now. I don't think I have one. I could probably make one or two, but there's no trees in this zone yet. Okay, so we discovered the cavern. Now, F1. And, okay. What is that? Cave Swallow. I'll let him keep digging. Okay, gotta hit another cavern layer. There he is. Okay, we got trees and stuff down here. Okay. So build, construct floor. I'm just gonna put this right on top of the uh, downstairs so nothing can come up. So now I have a better picture of what's underneath me. Chop some more trees here. Stockpile blocks. Put that right here. Settings. I'm gonna forbid metal bars. Forbid bars of other material. This stone and clay blocks right there. And in this stockpile, settings. Forbid that. Making, we need to bring carpentry inside. Build the workshop. See? Let's put that right there. And dig a little passage right there. I'm gonna let these cats run around. At least one of the cats I'm gonna let run around. So, shift N. So I want to start at least um, something on this above ground fortress. So I'm going to channel. Got to figure out where the center is going to be. Here. 
just gonna trace out the um, outline of this trade depot. Also have to get water inside the fortress somehow. Just in case, because um, I'm not set up for um, any kind of invasion or anything like that right now. So this is a brook, the water depth is 7.7 seven on the layer down, and they can drink right out of that because it's flowing water, it's not stagnant water, it's not muddy, it's not salt water. And the way water works in this game is that if I dig a channel from the top of this into this downstairs, it's going to flood, it's going to create equilibrium. So. Um, but what happens is when the water goes through a diagonal like this, then that resets the pressure of the water to this level. I just wanted to dig this out so that way if we if maybe we do get an invasion um, then I could come in maybe down here and access that in, if we start um, getting real thirsty or something okay so we got this re little reservoir filling up I can dig a tunnel from this point right here like that and I can pull this water anywhere I want in the map and I can access it from this level now okay so build construct what is this oh, there's a little fire clay here
So I'm not really going to know how to build this structure until I know which direction the um, trade caravan is going to come. A little lungfish just hanging out everywhere. Also going to go to I. Set another zone here. No, not N. P. Should be F. Miners here, I'm gonna turn on hauling. Okay, good. So now this is great. It's pouring the water in. The water depth will go from one to seven. And if you Look at this space three-dimensionally and slice it into seven segments. That's the number is going to be the depth of the water. I really need somebody to be crafting rock mugs. N, remove that construction, and then I'll rebuild it out of uh, stone blocks. Now I gotta move these nest boxes as well. Unclaimed, so build, shift N. bins as well. The block stockpile here is getting real full of blocks. However, if you go to the stockpile settings here, it can allow 30 bins. You can put the blocks into the bins, um, and that is kind of automatic once the bins are created. Oh, caravan has arrived. Excellent. So we're just going to follow the caravan in. Where did he come out? I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I want the opening to this on the top of the map. I'm going to press G here. On the tra I'm on the trade depot. I'm going to press G to move the goods. And now it's going to... And this is going to highlight or allow me to trade pretty much anything in the fortress. I'm gonna go down to crafts here. Shift enter. Wish I could trade more stuff than that. Um, yeah, that's it. So, 
Now I could, only the broker may trade. I didn't set a broker yet. Um, I could press B and have anyone trade. However, as the, whichever dwarf is the broker and trades, if you set it up in that way, where you only have one trading, then they're gonna gain some skill in negotiation. Um, they're gonna gain some social skills, um, appraiser skill, bookkeeper. I think I set up one of them. Lowercase n is for nobles. Uh, I'm just looking for it over here in the menu. Right down here. Nobles and administrators. I'm going to press N. And I'm going to go down to the broker and bookkeeper. I'm going to set the broker and the bookkeeper to be the same dwarf. I'm in Dwarf Therapist and I can go to other skills here. We got Appraiser and Record Keeper on Udil. So I set those skills in the Embark. Uh, so he's going to be the Broker and the Bookkeeper. So the Broker, and then we're just going to find him in this list. Right there. There he is, towards the top. And now he's going to require things. If I click on this when it's read like this, his requirements aren't, ma aren't met. He can also demand things and make some mandates. We're gonna click on his requirements. He needs a meager office, okay? Is it the same? So we're gonna have to build um, Udil here in office. meager office, so. A meager office, so we'll just stick him in a closet somewhere. Whatever. We can replace him. Or can we? So we're gonna build a table in his new office. Shift P. And a chair or throne. Right there. And we're going to build a door. And designations S. And smooth stone it. Can also smooth stone that. And that. So this is, this is a rough hewn granite wall, so, and this is just a cavern floor. So they're gonna come along and um, smooth the stone out, make it nice. Now that we have um, the, tr the trade caravan here and our um, broker selected, you gotta press R to request a trader at the depot. They bring some guards with them as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna press T to trade. So on the trade screen here, I can move up and down this list and left and right with the arrow keys. I can press shift enter and that's gonna trade everything I have on my side. I can also press shift enter again, that's gonna untrade everything I have. So this is the value, this is the weight. If they don't have the caravans and you tried to trade too many things that are heavy, they're not going to be able to take them. This T means they're going to be traded. And over on this side, I can go up and down this list. Now, if I keep scrolling down, it's going to go to the next page and the next page and so on. If I hold down, I can also shift enter over here. 
turn that on and off for everything. And maybe later on, I will um, do something like that where I'll have enough value here to just trade everything I have for everything they have and then just sort it from there inside the fortress. If I just wanted um, these dolomite blocks here, they're like 10 value and they're a little heavy. The, the weight doesn't matter on my end, the weight matters for them going out. So right now, the bottom of the screen here, trader profit and the value. As I add to the items that I want from them, the profit's gonna go down and the value's gonna go up. The value of these items is 30 and their profit is 108. They're gonna be ecstatic with that. Value is 70, their profit's 68. They're gonna be pretty happy with it. 80 to 58, they're gonna be okay with it. And then as the profit and the value ratio start uh, getting different from each other, they're going to be less and less happy as the profit goes down and more and more happy as the profit goes up. It doesn't have to be even um, because they came here to trade, um, but there has to be some value for them. There's not much that I need right now except for maybe, a, maybe another axe or pick. I, my, if I give them all my stuff and don't take anything, it's a 138 trader profit and a value of they're not losing anything. So, steel pick. I want to pick, but those ones are too expensive. Bronze pick for 110. I don't think they'll go for that. They might. I'm gonna press T to trade. They show on trade the selected goods. Enter. With your trade goods such as they are, I can't fathom you ending up with all of those items. So he's not going for that one. I want to trade at least something. I want to get at least something from him so he's happy when he leaves. You can try a couple times. If you keep um, if you keep messing up the trade, he's just gonna leave. We go down to the bottom of the list here and see if we can get some cheese. Yak cheese. Uh, maybe just one. Oh, the value is 10, so we'll do five. So value, trade of profits 88, trade, enter. Ah, oh, wonderful, thank you for your business. Okay, and he's off. We have to go back to here and press R again. So no traders requested and they're gonna automatically take the goods that are left over that are ours. Make a throne room or study. So we really only need the chair to make an office for him, so we're gonna press R, enter, assign. And with DF hack here, I can press one and that's gonna auto allocate the broker to this office. So if I make a new broker, it's gonna replace Olden and the new broker is gonna take this office without me doing anything. Press N. Needs a meager office? He has a meager office. Okay, so this is um, deconstructed here. So build, construct wall. And now I want to go down in this list. That's all I got, right? Granite blocks here. Shift, enter. these doing sort of getting there add brew drink from plant repeat alt w shift a enter shift r 75 to 100 
for drink and plant, repeat. So now that I already set that, it's gonna set that for all the workshops to brew drink from plant 75 to 100. So I, don't I only set that once. We go to Alt W Shift S. Uh, these are all our current um, workflow statuses. If I click, on, uh, if I highlight drink and any material here, um, this is where we are right now. So we're below the minimum, but not above the max. We just lost a couple because of the construction. We're way above the production limit because we've been drinking and emptying barrels. I'm not going to set up the kitchen yet. I need to go to the status and then kitchen. So whip finds we can brew. So they are collecting plants. Uh, we're making rice wine now, so we're making some sake. Uh, whip fine, whip fine wine, I believe. Maybe beer, I'm not sure. Yams. So the only thing I really turn off for cooking is the plump helmets. Because that's going to give me a constant supply of alcohol. I'm going to go over to the next tab here for seeds. I'm going to press tab. The seeds here, I'm just double checking that they're disabled for cooking. Because I don't want them to use all my seeds there. The drinks here. I'm going to disable the drinks to be used with cooking, the Dwarven beer and rum. And these are all fine. Meat, fish, other? Fine. I can cook with those. Okay. Okay, they are... They are pouring mortar down. Wish more of them would do it. So we got two. So I guess maybe only one can fill the pond up. There's only one space for that pond, so I think only one can do it at once. One dwarf can have that job because there's only one space for the pond to be filled. So he gets it, pours it once, puts the bucket back, and then I'm going to make a stockpile, finish goods, I'm going to put it right here. Just one space, settings, forbid the type. I'm fine if it's an artifact too, if artifacts go in there too. Uh, I'm just going to turn on goblets here. So now they have a goblet stockpile right in the hall. And this stockpile here, I'm going to go to settings. And go to finished goods. And disable goblets. Craft dwarf shop. Uh, looks like they're making goblets. Alt W. Back to Dwarf Therapist here, because I got 10 idlers, so... So maybe we need some more... Carpenters, Masons... We could actually turn on Stone Detailing. And Stone Crafting is off on everybody, so... I should really set up just one or two guys to just stonecraft. Yeah, you know what? These guys. Okay, we got this guy here. This dwarf here is starting to smooth the stone. Errol here is starting to make some mugs. Or he's making some crafts. That's the active one. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more if you haven't yet. And um, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments.
Thank you very much for watching.